Magandang tanghali po sa ating mga kababayan at sa mga miyembro ng Malacanang Press Corps. The President started the week by joining his counterparts from the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, ASEAN, and the People's Republic of China in a productive discussion at the ASEAN-China Special Summit to commemorate the 30th anniversary of dialogue relations. Here are some of the highlights. Number one, the President acknowledged China's timely assistance to ASEAN's COVID-19 pandemic response efforts, highlighting that China is the first dialogue partner that ASEAN engaged when COVID-19 broke out and among the first to provide vaccines when these were scarce. Number two, the President welcomed China's ratification of the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement, underscoring that enhanced multilateralism and connectivity will be the drivers of inclusive and comprehensive recovery. Number three, the President reiterated the call for urgent climate action by supporting the work of the ASEAN Center for Biodiversity hosted by the Philippines. And number four, the President raised the South China Sea issue, expressed grave concern in the recent event in the Ayungin Shoal and called for self-restraint. He likewise told China to remain committed to the conclusion of an effective and substantive code of conduct in the South China Sea. Kaugnay sa issue ng Ayungin Shoal, dumating na ang resupply boats sa Ayungin Shoal at nakarating na sa BRP Sierra Madre ngayong tanghali. Samantala, Nagsimula na kahapon, November 22, ang rollout ng booster shots sa A2 o mga senior citizens at additional shots para naman sa A3 o yung may mga immunocompromised. Kasama sa A3 o mga immunocompromised ay ang may roong immunodeficiency state, may HIV virus, active cancer or malignancy, transplant recipients at mga pasyente na nasa immunosuppressives. Paalala lamang po, hindi pa po nirerekomenda ang additional or booster doses sa general population. Mamaya ay makakasama natin si FDA Director General Eric Domingo para ipaliwanag sa atin ang mga detalye nitong panuntunan. Sa usaping bakuna, dumating kaninang umaga, November 23, ang 682,360 doses ng Moderna vaccine na binili ng pamahalaan. Samantala, nasa halos 76.5 million ang kabuang bilang ng doses ng bakuna na naiturok sa buong Pilipinas as of November 22, 2021, ayon sa National COVID-19 Vaccination Dashboard. Sa bilang na ito, nasa 43.88% or almost 33.8 million na ang fully vaccinated. Habang sa Metro Manila ay higit 100% or 10.3 million na ang nakatanggap ng first dose samantalang 94.04% o mahigit 9.1 million na ang fully vaccinated. Sa COVID-19 update naman po, nasa 984 ang mga bagong kaso ayon sa datos ng DOH na may petsang November 22, 2021. Ang kabuang bilang ng mga aktibong kaso sa kauna-unahang pagkakataon ngayong 2021 ay mas mababa na sa 20,000. Ito na ang pinakamababa since June 18, 2020. Ang 2.8% positivity rate naman ang pangalawang pinakamababa mula nang naging available ang testing data noong April 2020. Kung matatandaan po natin, March 2020 ang kauna-unahang kaso ng local transmission ng COVID-19 sa bansa. Nasa 97.6% naman ang porsyento ng gumaling. Ibig sabihin, nasa mahigit 2.7 million ang gumaling. Habang nasa 1.67% ang ating fatality rate. Walungkot naming binabalita sa inyo na kahapon ay nagtala tayo ng 218 
sa bilang ng mga binawian ng buhay dahil sa COVID-19. Sumatotal ay mayroon na tayong 47,288 COVID deaths. Below 40% pa rin ang ating hospital care utilization rate. Sa buong Pilipinas, nasa 32% ang ICU bed utilization, 31% naman ang sa Metro Manila. 27% naman ang utilized isolation beds sa buong Pilipinas. Sa Metro Manila, ito ay nasa 24%. Samantala, 17% ang utilized ward beds, 23% naman dito sa Metro Manila. Pagdating naman sa ventilators, ang utilized sa buong Pilipinas ay nasa 18%, 20% naman sa buong Metro Manila. Gayun pa man, bumababa man ang bilang ng mga numero kaugnay sa pandemya. Patuloy po ang ating paalala sa ating mga kababayan. Sumunod sa mask, hugas, iwas at magpa bakuna. Isa pang malagang update Ininspeksyon kahapon ni Pangulong Duterte ang mga proyekto sa lungsod ng General Santos. Sa General Santos Airport, personal na ininspeksyon ng Pangulo ang pinalawak at mas pinaayos na passenger terminal building, ang mga modernong navigational aids at ang pinatayong kaap administration building. Kung dati ay nasa 800,000 passengers ang kayang ma-accommodate ng passenger terminal building sa isang taon, ang pasilidad ay kaya na ngayong mag-accommodate ng dalawang milyong pasahero kada taon. Ininspeksyon din ng Pangulo ang katatapos lamang na Port Operations Building Amenity Complex ng Port of General Santos sa Makar Wharf. Kung noon ay siksikan, makipot, mainit at lumang-luma ang transit shed at warehouse ng pantalan, ngayon ay moderno, mas malawak at mas maganda na ito. Nasa 3,000 square meters na ang Port Operations Building Amenity Complex. Aabot sa 1,300 na malalaking barko kada taon ang kayang i-accommodate ng Port of General Santos. Samantala, nalagdaan na ang Memorandum Order number 57 kung saan inaatasan ang pagsusumite ng Citizens Charter ng bawat ahensya ng gobyerno kasama na ang state universities and colleges at mga local government units. Ito ay bilang pagtalima sa Ease of Doing Business and Efficient Government Service Delivery Act. Pagkatapos ng briefing na ito ay bibigyan namin ng kopya ang MPC. Ngayong araw, inaalala natin ang mga naging biktima ng Maguindanao Massacre. Kung inyong matatandaan, sa ilalim ng kasalukuyang administrasyon, nakamit natin ang katarungan para sa mga biktima ng naturang kaso. Pagkatapos matulan ang mga napatunayang may sala noong 2019. Patuloy po nating sinusulong ang kalayaan sa pamamahayag. Maraming salamat po. I now turn you over to FDA Director General Eric Tumingo via Zoom para ipaliwanag ang booster shots or additional vaccine doses. Ay, magandang tanghali, Sec. Carlo, sa press court sa inyo po lahat. Magbigay lang po ako ng konting updates uh, on the booster ng ating pong mga bakuna, pagbabakuna ng additional shots na naumpisahan na rin po no? uh, noong Friday. And just to give you an idea kung ano po ba itong mga tinatawag na booster shots, gusto ko lang po munang paalala ulit na as of now, lahat po ng bakuna ang ginagamit sa Pilipinas are still under emergency use authorization. Wala pa pong nag apply sa atin ng full approval ang pinaka siguro mauuna yung kung Pfizer na nag-apply na sa Amerika pero dito sa atin ay hinahanda pa rin daw nila na yung kanilang application hindi lang sa Pilipinas kundi sa ibang bansa and we have other vaccines that are being used under EUA ang pinakawalin pong nabigyan namin ng EUA ay yung Covavax ito po yung counterpart na Novavax naman sa Amerika no? sa, sa India, sa Serum Institute of India Covavax po ang kanyang pangalan ngayon, pag naglabas po kami ng emergency use authorization, very, very specific po lahat yun, ano kung saan siyang factory ginawa, 
kung ano yung good manufacturing practice certification ng company na yun, kung anong edad siya ginagamit, at saka kung ano ang interval ng doses at kung ilang doses. So every time magkakaroon ng pagbabago, halimbawa sa age group, halimbawa sa pagdadagdag ng bakuna ng pangatlo, kailangan pong mag-apply sa FDA ng variation doon sa kanilang emergency use uh, authorization. At kailangan magsasubmit sila of course ng scientific evidence to support that amendment. In the case of additional uh, doses or booster vaccine doses, ang nag-apply po for variation ay ang Pfizer na nag-apply ng variation para magdagdag ng pangatlong dose doon sa kanilang bakuna mismo. Yung AstraZeneca nag-apply din po yan ng additional third dose para po doon sa kanilang bakuna rin. Kaya po kumulukus ang tawag natin dyan dahil pareho. Ang Sinovac nag-apply din po siya ng third dose, same vaccine. At ganun din po ang Sputnik. Pero ang Sputnik po, nag-apply siya ng amendment both as a homologous booster, na ibig sabihin mga tlong dose, at as a heterologous booster. Ibig sabihin, in-apply po niya ang kanilang bakuna, yung Sputnik-like, bilang booster sa mga tao na nabigyan ng ibang bakuna na, na brand na nauna. At the same time, ang Department of Health at ang Health Technology Assessment Council, binigyan sila ng rekomendasyon, at in-apply din po yon ng amendment ng Department of Health sa FDA. Yung mga iba-iba naman po heterologous vaccine combinations. So, ang na-approve po after po ito pag-aralan ng ating mga vaccine experts, in-approve natin ang paggamit ng Pfizer bilang homologous na booster, ang AstraZeneca bilang homologous booster din sa mga nakatanggap na ng Astra dati, at ganun din po ang Sinovac bilang homologous booster sa mga taong nakatanggap na ng dalawang Sinovac. Yun naman pong na-approve natin ang Sputnik as a yung for use as a heterologous booster. Ibig sabihin kung ibang bakuna ang natanggap dati, ito pong Sputnik ay maaring matanggap as a third dose. At doon pong Department of Health na listahan, marami pong na-approve no, na heterologous combination. Iba-iba pong combination. At ito po ngayon ang dinesisyonan ng DOH kung alin ang gagamitin nila. Ngayon hindi pa po natin pinapayagan ang paggamit ng uh, booster uh, vaccine sa lahat po ng mga mayan. No? Unang-una, ang emergency use authorization kailangan magpakita na benefit outweighs the risk. So kung sino po yung mga taong pinakamakalaki ang benepisyo na makukuha dun sa additional dose, yun ang ating uunahin. Kasi syempre po, bawat bakuna, meron naman po talagang possible ng side effects. Kaya kung mababa lang naman po ang risk right now na magkaroon ng sakit, eh mas hindi po masyadong malaki yung possible benefit. No? At syempre po, pinaka-importante pa rin, mabakunahan muna yung mga hindi pa nababakunahan or hindi pa kompleto ang kanilang bakuna. Pero at the same time, alam po natin na lumagpas na ng anim na buwan yung vaccine ng iba nating mga kababayan, lalo na yung unang nabakunahan, katulad po ng mga healthcare professionals. So ito po ngayon, yung population groups na this time, ay allowed na nating bigyan po ng additional shot. Number one, yung pong healthcare professionals, yung pong mga nagtatrabaho sa mga ospital, 18 years and above, who have frequent exposure to COVID-19. Sila po, kailangan natin bakunahan kasi sila po yung laging exposed araw-araw, gumagabot po sila ng may COVID. Pangalawa, ito po ang tamang panahon dahil talagang sila mga 6, 7, 8 months na ang kanilang completion ng kanilang dose. At habang kaunti ang cases natin ng COVID na inaalagaan, ngayon natin sila gustong bigyan ng bakuna. No? Kasi in case magkaroon man po ng mga surge ulit sa darating na taon, halimbawa, or the next few years, gusto natin siyempre yung health workforce natin malakas yan. Hindi dapat sila nagkakasakit. Kasi po, since nagbakunahan tayo, mga health workers natin, wala naman pong namamatay na no, sa COVID. Kung nagkakaroon man sila, mild or moderate na sakit, kaya alam po, kung merong magkakasakit sa kanila, sila ay inaano natin, no? in, tinatago natin sila, ina-isolate natin for 14 days, hindi sila nakakapagtrabaho at nababawasan ng workforce. So yan po ang una natin kailangang bakunahan ng booster. Pangalawa, yun pong mga senior citizen o yung mga tao na merong immunocompromised. Kasi yun pong ibang matatanda na at yung immunocompromised, after makatanggap po sila na ng kanilang second dose, baka hindi po kasing taas yung immune reaction na nagkakaroon sa katawan nila compared, for example, sa 30 years old o 40 years old na malusog. So kailangan po nilang madagdagan ng dose para tumaas 
yung kanilang immune reaction at yung immune system nila ay lalong sumula. At ang isa pa po natin kasing nakikita, alam naman po natin, nire-report ng FDA na may breakthrough infections. Ang breakthrough infections po, 90% yan sa less than 60 years old. 10% lang po ang senior citizen na may breakthrough infections kasi nasa bahay naman sila. Pero halos lahat po ng namamatay na breakthrough infections ay senior citizen. Kaya sila po talaga yung kailangan natin dahil at risk sila of getting severe COVID and dying from COVID more than anybody else. And then pangatlo na pinapayagan na po natin, yung kung 18 to 60 years old, pero may comorbidities na napipredispose po sila na kung magka-COVID sila ay maging severe at saka mamatay from COVID. So ito po muna ngayon at this time. No? And it is given six months after completion of the second dose. Pero lang po kung ang natanggap ay Janssen na single dose or in Sputnik Light, maaari na pong bigyan ng additional dose ito ng three months after ng kanila pong pagbabakuna. So gusto lang po namin paalala ulit ng FDA na sa ating pong pagbumonitor, nakikita po natin that the benefits of vaccination outweigh the risks. Talaga mas marami po tayong naisasalba kesa po doon sa mga adverse events na inaire-report sa atin that are very rare and happen in less than 1% of the population. And vaccines are effective and critical tool to control the pandemic. Yung pong ating boosters, sinasabi nga natin, should be considered when a significant portion of eligible individuals have been vaccinated. So kapag po mas marami na ang nababakunahan, siguro po maaari na rin tayong mag-start doon sa general public. You know? Pero depende pa po sa pag-aaral natin at sa informasyon kung makikita na talaga the benefit outweighs the risk. And since marami pa po tayong nakukuha na informasyon araw-araw, hindi lang po dito sa Pilipinas experience natin, kundi sa mga pag-aaral at saka sa experience sa ibang bansa, nalalaman po natin that the recommendation may change no? as more data becomes available. Araw-araw po, may bagong mga scientific evidence that we take into consideration para po mabago ang ating mga recommendation. So sa ngayon, ito po yung ginagamit ng ating pong DOH no? na mga available. Nakita na rin po siguro ninyo ito. So for group A1, Kapag po nakatanggap ng kahit anumang bakuna, maaari pong magbigay ng homologous vaccine or heterologous vaccine after 6 months. Yun naman pong Janssen o yung Johnson Johnson, after 3 months, maaari na pong magbigay ng isang heterologous na vaccine. Yun pong AstraZeneca, Pfizer, or Moderna. So yun lang, Sec. Carlo, maraming salamat. Maraming maraming salamat, DG Domingo. Uh, tumungo naman po tayo kay Yusek Rocky para sa mga katanungan mula sa MPC. Yes, uh, good afternoon, uh, Secretary Nograles and kay Undersecretary Domingo. Ang una pong tanong mula po kay Rosa Licos ng UNTV. Sa mga nakalipas na linggo po, nananatiling, uh, nananatiling pong uh, mataas ang COVID-19 death sa bansa kahit po kahit po pababa ang healthcare utilization rate ng COVID-19, tinatalakay ba ito sa IATF? Ano ang masasabi sa kasalukuyang clinical management ng severe critical COVID-19 na patients sa bansa? Mas marami na available treatment ngayon. Bakit hindi pa rin natin ma-improve ang management ng critical illness sa COVID-19? Opo, pinag-uusapan lagi yan sa IATF. No? Ang mga numero at mga data, mga datos. At nakikita po natin, no? na 9 out of 10 na mga COVID cases na nasa hospital po ay unvaccinated. Kaya nga po, ina-emphasize po talaga natin uh, yung vaccination, full vaccination na kinakailangan lalong-lalo na ng mga senior citizens, mga immunocompromised. Uh, lahat po yan na kailangan po talaga natin protektahan uh, laban sa COVID-19. Kaya number one, kailangan po na fully vaccinated sila. At pangalawa po, para sa booster shots or additional shots, eh, kabilang na rin po sila uh, dito sa uh, patakaran natin ng pag-booster at additional shots. Uh, siguro tanungin rin po natin si uh, FDA DG Domingo kung may, may dadagdag pa po siya. Oo. Oo. Sec. Carlo, you sec. Rocky. No? Uh, actually, ang ating pong mortality rate sa mga COVID-19 ay napakababa. No? It's less than 1.5%. This is actually one of the lowest sa buong mundo. No? So hindi po, maganda po ang management natin ng cases. Uh, sa ngayon, talagang for severe cases, very limited po ang gamot. 
na ginagamit sa buong mundo. Itong pangarente severe, tosidisumab. Ang mga bago po nating gamot ngayon na pumapasok, yung mga monopiravir, no clonacrib, are given to mild cases, mild to moderate, in the hope of preventing severe cases. So good news po yan. Makikita siguro natin in the next few months na kapag maaga tapos nagamot, ay eh, mababawasan ang magpupunta sa severe cases. Pero kaya alam po siguro napapansin ninyo ngayon, medyo mataas minsan yung mga deaths na nire-report. Kasi marami dito, alam po ni Sir Carlo, ito, mga backlogs, mga ngayon lamang nako-confirm, kaya po ngayon nire-report. Hindi po ibig sabihin na namatay po iyan within the last few days. No? Maaari pong dati pa yan, uh, pero ngayon lang po kasi nare-report at nabibila. Opo. Uh, ang sunod pong tanong ay mula kay Vic Sumintak. Can we get no po policy action regarding Senator and Presidential Candidate Ping Lacson's uh, personal visit in Pag-asa Island, West Philippine Sea at nagtanim ng Philippine na flag doon? Uh, well, bilang Senator, malaya naman po niyang gawin yan dahil kasama naman po yan sa teritory ng Pilipinas. Opo. From uh, Joel Peleño ng DWAIZ, nagbanta po si Filipino Paul uh, Volt. Ace uh, EJ Obiana na agad uh, magre-retiro if the National Athletics uh, Federation will not withdraw their ongoing inquiry laban po sa kanya kasunod ng kabiguan o mano niyang mabayaran ng kanyang uh, Ukrainian uh, coach but even the foreign coach ni Obiana dininay na ang allegation at sinasabi nga uh, sinisira lamang ng National Athletics Federation ng pangarap at uh, kinabukasan ni Obiana ano po ang reaction dito ng palas? do you think na dapat po nga uh, itigil ng Athletics Federation ang pagdinig against Obia, Obiana. Nagsalita na po ang PSC tungkol sa concern at issue po na yan at inaasahan natin na mas magigipang proactive ang PSC at imomonitor po natin yung developments ng concern po na yan. Opo. From uh, Joe Montemayor, any comment po sa lakas CMD statement that P President Duterte is still their uh, top choice for senator? Uh, yan lamang po ay patunay sa mga accomplishments uh, ni Pangulong Duterte at uh, patunay lamang din po na sa paniwala na kapag siya po ay nahihala, nahihalal bilang senador ng Republika ng Pilipinas ay mapagpatuloy niya rin yung mga nasimulan niya lalo na sa mga programa kontra kriminalidad, terorismo, kontra droga, kontra korupsyon, at sa mga economic uh, programs niya, kabilang ang Build, 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 at syempre yung patuloy na pagtulong niya sa mga mahirap nating mga kababayan. Thank you, Secretary Nograles. Maraming salamat, Yusek Rocky. Tumungo naman po tayo kay Mela Lesmoras ng PTV4. Hi, good afternoon, Secretary Nograles, kay Yusek Domingue at kay Yusek Rocky. Uh, Secretary Nograles, unahin ko lang po, may uh, talk to the people po ba si Pangulong Duterte mamaya at uh, kailan kaya ito kung sakali at ano pa po yung mga schedule niya na dapat abangan ng publiko? Uh, opo, tonight, um, based sa indicative schedule ay meron po siyang talk to the people. At uh, yung ibang mga schedules po niya, we will release it as soon as it becomes available to the public. Opo. And Secretary Nograles, tungkol lang po sa National Vaccination Days, just for the record, holiday, uh, ideklara na po ba uh, officially holiday ito? Or ito po yung magiging special working days itong 29 at December 1? At uh, paano po ba yung magiging participation ni Pangulong Duterte dito? Magiikot po ba siya sa mga vaccination sites? O kaya naman, uh, would he set as an example by uh, taking booster shot publicly? Um, yung issuance po tungkol dito, uh, abangan na lang po natin. But uh, at the soonest possible time, uh, pag in na po yung uh, from, the, from Malacanang, uh, i-announce po na natin agad. No? Uh, with regards sa participation uh, ng iba't ibang mga miyembro ng gabinete, meron pong mga invitations sa binigay sa selected uh, cabinet members para dun sa kick-off na gaganapin sa November 29 at yung uh, iba pang mga dates ay uh, meron pong in charge diyan. Uh, tungkol naman din po dun sa kay Pangulo uh, kung yung tanong mo kung mag booster ba or additional shot siya ay uh, Opo, and kung mag-iikot po siya rin. 
yung pag-iikot niya, abangan na lang po natin kung ano yung magiging um, ang, mag, ang lalabas no doon sa kanyang schedule at appointments office at yung kung tatanggap ba siya sa uh, isa sa publiko ba ang additional or booster shots ay that's actually between the president and his uh, personal physician so abangan na lang po natin kung ano maging advice ng kanyang oh. personal physician Opo. Secretary uh, Nebrales, just a quick follow-up. Sa isang panayam po kasi ni Secretary Galvez, nabanggit niya na magiging working, uh, special working days yung 29 and 1. So, as of now, habang wala, pong, uh, wala pa yung uh, order mula kay Pangulong Duterte, tama po, abangan pa rin natin kung ano yung mangyayari. Yan po yung recommendation. Uh, at kanya nga po, yan ay uh, nire-recommenda ay para naman po uh, yung mga kailangan magpabakuna ay uh, meron po silang, kumbaga, uh, meron silang, mabibigyan sila ng paintulot at uh, permiso ng kanilang mga employer na magpabakuna on those days. Kaya ang naisip is special working holidays. Yung hindi naman kailangan magpabakuna dahil tapos na at hindi naman kasama dun sa kailangan magpabakuna ay makapagtrabaho para naman umandar ang ating ekonomiya. Alam niyo naman na napaka-importante po ng fourth quarter uh, para sa ating economic growth. So, yun po yung naging recommendation. Abangan na lang po natin ano yung ilalabas na issuance mula sa Malacanang. Opo. At panghuli na lamang po, uh, Secretary Nograles, kasi kahapon nga ay uh, PRRD slams China's Act in Ayungin. At uh, sinabi ito ni Pangulong Duterte mismo sa harap ni Chinese President Xi Jinping. Uh, may impormasyon po ba tayo kung ano yung naging reaksyon ni President Xi? At uh, nagkaroon po ba siya ng message of assurance or apology uh, sa harap din doon, sa harap din ng naging ASEAN-China Special Summit? Um, I-refer na lang po siguro natin sa DFA kung meron bang naging reaksyon. Uh, but to my knowledge, um, hindi pa po nakarating sa amin ang any information tukol dyan. Okay. Maraming salamat po, Secretary Galvez at uh, kay Yusek Domingo, Yusek Rock. <laughs> salamat, Nela. <laughs> salamat din kay Secretary Galvez. Yusek Rocky? Secretary Nograles, ang tanong po mula kay uh, Joe Montemayor, ay uh, nasagot niyo na po yung tungkol sa uh, posibleng booster shot ni Presidente at Conum Brand. Yung tanong po ni Tuesday New, pareho sila ng tanong ni Evelyn Quiroz ng Filipino Mirror, ay nasagot niyo na rin requesting po ng EO para po sa uh, special working holidays uh, sa November 29 to December 1st. Tanong po ni Neil Jerome Morales ng Reuters, Uh, Maria Reza's lawyers, including Amal Clooney, in a news conference today urged the government to drop state cases against Reza to show the world that it, will, uh, that it respects human rights, human right as the world will be watching the Nobel Peace Prize ceremony. The government has a few months to go and it can still show the world that the Philippines is a big weapon of uh, democracy and uh, liberty. May we ask for the presidential palace comment on this. Yung kaso po ay nasa korte na. At uh, syempre, the judi judiciary, the judiciary is a co-equal branch ng executive. At nire-respeto po natin yung judiciary and our courts. At nire-respeto po natin sila at uh, tayo po ay malaki ang ating uh, confidence level, syempre, at uh, paniwala uh, sa ating courts of law that they will do the proper thing. So, the judiciary being a co-equal branch of government, ay nire-respeto po natin sila as a co-equal branch of government. So, nasa korte na well, po thank, yan. Thank you, Secretary Nograles. Let's go to Trisha Terada ng CNN. Hi, good afternoon, Sir Carlo, and to DJ Eric, and to you, Sir Rocky. Sir, first question, um, because there's a blast of spam job offers via text message, and many tend to attribute it or to blame it doon po sa possible leak sa contact tracing data kasi marami nagsasabi na nangyari lang itong uh, pagsisimula ng text blast after mag-fill in ng mga contact tracing data. May directive po ba yung palasyo sa National Privacy Commission about this? And is this a cause of concern for the IATF? Yung NTC uh, is already investigating the matter. And of course, it is also within the purview and mandate ng National Privacy Commission to also in investigate the matter. So, mm -hmm. try natin yung is kanilang... Is this a possible concern for the IATF na possible na leak siya oh, sir from... Oo, syempre, pag uh, privacy issue yan, uh, it's always a cause of concern. Not only for the IATF, but for government and for the public, syempre. 
Kaya nandyan po yung NTC and National Privacy. They have their mandate. They know what they must do. And we will continue to monitor them in the performance of their mandates. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you very much, Tech Carlos. Sir, just one question for DG Eric, please, if you may. Yeah, hi, Trisha. Hi, good afternoon, um, DG Eric. Sir, follow up lang po doon sa um, pediatric vaccination. I, um, your assessment, um, I think, it's uh it's para ilang weeks na rin po siyang nag roll out and kailan po kaya possible na simulan yung pediatric vaccination to younger ages like ages 4 to 11 kagaya po ginagawa sa US yeah the, the last data i saw about 2 weeks ago we did we already had about 500,000 no pediatric vaccinations both with Pfizer mostly and then some Moderna and the um, adverse event monitoring is very very low no less than 1% and mga mild lang naman no i think the most severe was allergies and ano uh, yung merong parang pasyente isa na bata na nag hyperventilate no so so far so good and we're still continuing with that but uh, like you said it's only until ano 12 years old pataas the 5 to 12 year old vaccines i think by pfizer uh, we hope that they will be sending in their application for an eua very soon uh, nagtanong na sila eh. then we already asked for the list of uh, requirements and they told us that they are completing the requirements. No? Meron lang kasi at ang difference konti dun sa formulation ng vaccine for children. So it's going to be a very, it's like a new EUA, no? kasi medyo may bagong uh, innovation dun sa product. But other than that, ang Sinovac din, hinihintay namin na mag-submit ulit ng data nila for children na below, ano, parang below 18 years old. They just want to have to complete some more data to give to our vaccine experts. And we hope to get that soon. So yun yung dalawang possible ano natin, vaccines for children below 12 coming soon. Sir, kung sa estimates lang po, when do you possibly see the vaccination for younger children, yung 4 to 11 na range, sir? I would think ano, before the end of the year. Na, uh, I'm pretty sure Pfizer is going to be ready. And uh, the Sinovac also told us that their data is being collated and will be ano, submitted soon. So... I believe before the end of the year, we're going to have uh, vaccines for children below 12. All right. Thank you very much, DG Eric. And thank you also, Sec Carlo. I mean, salamat. Back to you, Sec Rocky, for additional questions. Yes, uh, Secretary Nograles. Uh, from John Avila Viray, ng Asahe, Manila. Nasagot niyo, Secretary, pero baka may madagdag lang po kayo about uh, Ayungin Shoal. Uh, the president in his statement at the ASEAN-China summit shared that we abhor what happened in Ayungin Shoal recently. He sounded direct and critical of China's, China's Chinese action in the South China Sea. It's unusual for the president to speak this way. When it comes to China, what does he hope to accomplish by uh, changing his tone so close to the end of his uh, term? I think the president has always been consistent, no? sa UN General Assembly, sa mga ASEAN summits, lagi niyang binabalik-balikan yung UNCLOS at yung ating arbitral award. So, umabalik siya lagi doon at lagi niyang sinasabi yung uh, importance ng peace and unity, uh, importance of peaceful resolution ng ating disputes. So, very consistent si Pangulo uh, dyan sa issue at concern po na yan. Apo. Uh, from Jopel jo jo Peleño of BWIC, do you think naka, um, natanong na pala po ito noong last uh, briefing. From Evelyn Quiroz ng Filipino Mirror, for you, Seca Domingo, you recently stated that COVID-19 vaccines may have full authorization from the Philippines uh, Food and Drug Administration uh, by early next year, but no drug maker has applied uh, for full, full market authorization ye yet. Can't the government dispense uh, with the authorization requirements so that the vaccines can be brought in and distributed as soon as possible? Well, actually, Jose Graki, may nakaready na kami na express link for that. Ano? And definitely, it will be expedited pag nag-apply. Pero ang marketing authorization po kasi is very, ano po ito, very particular to each company who owns the product. So hindi po pwede itong basta na lamang ibigay ng FDA. Kailangan po kung sino ang may-ari ng bakuna dahil may intellectual property po sila. Sila po ang mag-a-apply niyan, magpapakita ng kanilang quality data, ng kanilang safety and efficacy. 
At pag makita natin maaari na po siyang ibenta, ay papayagan po ng FDA. Pero until mag-apply po ang kumpanya, hindi po natin yan maaaring payagan na ibenta ng kahit po sige. Uh, from MJ uh, Blanca Flor of Daily Tribune, the president said that yesterday that the presidential aspirant he had accused of using illegal drugs eluded law enforcers since he allegedly takes drugs in exclusive uh, places katulad sa yate or in the air. Is it an admission daw po that rich people evaded the government's drug war? Ito po ba ang reason kung bakit may perception na mahihirap lamang ang nahuhuli o napapatay? Hindi po. Actually, uh, kung titingnan natin ang datos, according to PDEA, pati ang ating mga law enforcement agencies, ay marami na po tayong nahuli na mga high-value targets na lumalabag sa Dangerous Drugs Act. No? Uh, pangalawa, ang mensahe lamang po ni Pangulo dito ay syempre kailangan din po natin ng kooperasyon ng bawat isa, ng publiko, lalo na. So kung may nalalaman po na impormasyon ay... Um, ang patuloy na panawagan for the public to cooperate and inform our law enforcement agencies pag may nalalaman po sila. Uh, pangatlo po, yung Philippine National Police natin has already issued a statement that uh, they're already conducting a fact-finding investigation uh, regarding the matter. Opo. Ang uh, second question po niya, after the president called the uh, presidential aspirant Bongbong Marcos lazy and spoiled, Mayor Sara asked her supporters in Tagum City to protect her running mate from uh, criticism. Does it, does it show a widening rift between the president and his eldest daughter? Um, they belong to different political parties. At uh, syempre, as with um, any different political parties, parties, meron mga common candidates at meron mga candidates uh, na sinusuportan for other positions, no? Uh, ang either party. So, in a political exercise like the elections, ay eh, normal po na magkaroon ng ganyan, no? Pagkakaiba uh, ng sinusuporta ang mga kandidato. Opo. Ang uh, third question po niya, will there be a uh, last ditch effort on the part of the ruling PDP Laban to reach out to Mayor Sara and ask her to support your presidential bet instead of Mr. Marcos? Is the party uh, pessimistic na magbabago pa ang isip ni Mayor Sara? Uh, sa pagkakalam ko po, ang PDP Laban ay magkakaroon ng isang uh, National Council meeting na gaga gaganapin a uh, few weeks from now. So maaring pag-usapan po ng partido. Uh, ang, ang concern or issue po na yan, or ang question po na yan. Opo. From uh, Aiko Miguel ng UNTV for uh, DJ Domingo, ang uh, Office of the Vice President meron ng supply ng mol Molnopiravir. Is this allowed under uh, CSP? Paano ang monitoring sa mga mabibigyan ng antiviral pill? Ilan na ang hospital na may uh, CSP at may uh, pending application for Molnopi Ravir. Similar question po with Red Mendoza ng Manila Times. Yeah. As of now, you say, Kathy, no, uh, Red at Aiko, meron na tayong 89 hospitals na merong compassionate special permit for Molnopi Ravir. And I believe there are three uh, importers that are supplying the hospitals na mga licensee. Galing sa mga suppliers na manufacturers na licensee ng MSD. No? Uh, yung Nabasa ko naman yung sa, ano, yung sa news kanina, yung kay OB, sa OBP, I think they are partnering with the hospitals, itong Qualimed. At itong Qualimed Hospital, meron naman sila, kasama sila sa listahan ng mga hospital na may compassion and special permit. So they just have to follow yung ating regulations na of course, kailangan ililista nila yung mga pasyente na pagbibigyan nila at i-report nila sa FDA yung utilization and outcome ng mga pasyente na bigyan ng ito. Opo. From ang um, follow-up po ni Red Mendoza ng uh, Manila Times uh, para sa kay DJ, DJ uh, Domingo, legal ba ito and allow ba ito under the terms of the C CSP? Hindi ba maaaring ikapahamak ng mga patient na ang mga doktor ay magbibigay lang ng prescription and uh, dispense ang molnopiravir no, ng walang monitoring? Uh, kailangan po sumunod sila sa katulad na sinabi ko Red. Hindi naman siguro sa Office of the Vice President sila magbibigay ng gamot dahil bawal yon. So dapat po doon sa ospital na may compassion and special permit, maaaring i-refer ang pasyente doon at yung mga doctors doon ang magbibigay ng gamot. With full understanding, syempre, ng pasyente na ang gamot na ito 
ay hindi pa registrado sa FDA kundi binibigay lamang under a special permit and that it is still an investigational drug at hindi pa po fully ano ano hindi pa fully registered pagkatapos po noon kailangan nire-report ng ospital at ng doktor sa amin kung kanino binigay at saka kung ano po ang naging outcome kung gumaling ba or hindi halimbawa ang mga pasyente dito Thank you po as uh, Secretary Nograles from uh, Jerome Aning ng PDI is the president's information on the presidential candidate who is taking cocaine current or past information yesterday daw po in Jensen the president said the can uh, they said the candidate was using cocaine in his second speech in Mindoro last Friday he said he knew about it when he was mayor if the president's information is current should the president just ask the police to conduct a tokhang visit on the candidate and urge him to undergo drug rehabilitation? Um, gaya ng nabanggit ko kanina, it is now undergoing fact-finding investigation ng Philippine National Police um, in coordination with the PDEA. Opo. Second question po niya, last week in your briefing, you said the president's uh, information on the candidate who is taking cocaine may have come from uh, intel reports however in two of his three previous speeches the president kept saying itanong nyo sa mga mayayaman does the president have direct knowledge about this candidate taking cocaine because if he does can he just order the police to file a case opo kasama naman po yan sa fact finding uh, na investigation na ginagawa ng PNP at uh, with the support ng uh, PDEA at uh, tandaan po natin no, na marami sa mga naging successful na operasyon ng San Pideya at ng ating law enforcement agencies ay uh, dahil po sa kooperasyon din po ng publiko, no? mga informants, uh, those uh, citizens who cooperate and who provide information, necessary information to our Pideya agents and our Philippine National Police. So nadun pa rin yung ating panawagan sa publiko, no? At uh, ang PIDEA has always emphasized no, uh, na meron silang hotline, uh, even through social media, kung saan pwede makipag-ugnayan ang publiko. Kung may nalalaman silang any information about anyone uh, who are violating the dangerous drugs law. So walang pinipili yan at uh, lahat naman po ng information na pwedeng i-provide ng public is uh, welcome uh, to our law enforcement agencies. Opo. Ang third question po niya, yesterday daw po in Jensen, the president said, uh, rich uh, people snort cocaine habang sila ay nasa kanilang mga yate. How can this uh, loophole in the war on drugs be addressed by the government? What if yung yate po ay nasa international waters? Can a person can be charged and uh, prosecuted criminally if he takes illegal drugs on a yacht and that a yacht is on international waters or high seas? Ang law enforcement agencies natin, uh, pati ang DOJ, um, know how to handle cases like this. No? So sa pagkakaalam ko bilang abogado, no, pag uh, registered sa Pilipinas no, at nasa international seas, ang vessel ay eh, yung laws of the Philippines will apply. Uh, pag foreign vessel naman sa international seas, uh, yung jurisdiction ng Philippines wala doon. Pero pag registered sa Pilipinas at nasa international seas, nasa jurisdiction po ng Pinas ng Philippines. So... Um, alam, na, alam na po ng ating mga um, law enforcement agencies and DOJ uh, what particular international laws plus we can also always get the help and uh, cooperation also of our uh, partners in the international community no? in terms of enforcing um, any uh, uh, enforcing our anti-drugs law from uh, Jopel Peleño of DWIC, sumalang na po sa voluntary drug test sa Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency o PDEA, sina Presidential Aspirant Senator Lacson and Vice Presidential Senator Soto para po magsilbing halimbawa daw po sa iba pang kandidato for this coming 2022 elections. Kapwa negatibo ang resulta ng kanilang drug test. Do you think na dapat na rin pong sumunod dito ang lahat ng presidential at vice presidential candidates upang mapatunayan na walang katotohanan na naging pahayag ni Pangulong Duterte na may presidential aspirant na gumagamit ng cocaine. Similar question po ni Vic Sumintak ng Net25 at ni Kaide Atienza ng Business World. Opo, again, um, that's voluntary. Um, 
even if hindi siya kasama sa mga requirements for candidates, whether presidential, vice presidential, senator, or kung anumang position, um, it's purely voluntary at um, nasa kanila po yun kung magpa-voluntary drug test sila uh, para isa publiko na sila ay drug free then it's entirely up to these candidates po. Opo. From uh, Ace Romero ng Philippine Star, uh, reaction po ng camp, uh, the camp of former Senator uh, Marcos issued a statement stating that he tested negative for cocaine use. Opo. Anong Opo. Yes. statement daw po. Uh, like I said, it's voluntary for any presidential candidate, vice presidential candidate, senatorial candidate, or uh, any candidate for that matter to undergo voluntary drug test at isa publiko po. Opo. Yung uh, sinantanong po ni uh, Ace Romero, uh, negative ng issue daw po ang statement yung camp ng ma ma former Senator Marcos. He tested negative for cocaine use. Yes. Uh, so, uh, sorry, you said Kraki, that's a statement and they're asking for a uh, reaction po. Opo, uh, like I said, it's purely voluntary. It's up to the candidate. If he wants to take a drug test and release it to the public, then voluntary po yan. Opo. Opo. Uh, sunod pong tanong, uh, maaari na po kayang mapagbigyan ng hiling ng ilang uh, pribadong eskwelahan na miyembro ng Coordinating Council of Private Educational Association of the Philippines of Cocopea na mapabilang o makasama sa pilot testing ng face-to-face -face classes lalo na ngayong tuloy-tuloy na po ang pagbaba ng COVID-19 cases sa bansa. Opo, ang sa pagkakaalam ko ay nag-uusap at nakikipag-ugnayan na rin po yung Cocopea with DepEd. Uh, nagkaroon na po sila ng mga initial meetings at uh, they're finalizing, alam ko may mga guidelines ang DepEd, uh, na-communicate na po yun sa Cocopea for them to follow. Uh, and um, if they follow all the guidelines, then DepEd will grant them um, the per permission to conduct face-to-face -face classes. So meron na po silang um, coordination efforts na ginagawa. Opo. From uh, Ivan Mayrina ng GMA News, what actions will the palace take on PCOO officials, specifically Mr. Dominic Tahon, who were uh, censored by the Senate after uh, they were caught drinking alcohol and exhibited improper behavior, behavior while budget deliberations were ongoing? Similar questions with Lanesca Panti of GMA News Online. Uh, we refer the matter to the head of agency. And we are confident that the head of agency will take the necessary actions. Tapo. From ang second pung tanong ni Ivan Mayrina, uh, does the president continue to support Pastor Apollo Kibuloy? Will the president allow his uh, extradition to the U.S. should the U.S. formally request it? As a lawyer and as a former prosecutor and the chief executive of the country, he will execute the laws accordingly. Opo. Sir, may follow-up lang po si Saladina Monte ng NHK. In a statement, Bongbong Marcos says he took a cocaine test yesterday and the result was submitted this morning to the Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency, OPEDEA, the Office of the Chief of the PNP and the National Bureau of Investigation. Won't you encourage Marcos to go directly to PDEA and have himself tested there? Um, as I mentioned, this is really a purely voluntary act for any candidate in whatsoever position. So it's really up to them how they would want to conduct their voluntary drug test and uh, if they want to submit it to the public. Nasa kanila okay. po yun. From uh, Pia Gutierrez ng uh, ABS-CBN, for uh, DG Domingo, is uh, Molnup Molnupiravir already available in the market? Magkano po ito? May mga napabalita ng nag-order ng gamot na ito bago pa man daw po magkaroon ng EUA. Illegal ba ito? Ay, hindi naman po. No? It's not yet out in the market. Meaning hindi pa po ito mabibili sa mga butika ng kahit sino. Pero even before the EUA, uh, there are now 89 hospitals have gotten a compassionate special permit from the FDA. So pag gano'n po, maaari na lang import ito, uh, yun lang, uh, under strict control lamang po, they just have to report to FDA on the utilization of the products. Opo.
from uh, Vance Fernandez, Secretary Nograles, mm. with the latest daw pong illegal incursion of Chinese Coast Guard in Philippines territory resulting in a water cannon attack on Philippine supply boats heading to resupply Philippine forces in the area. Why did the supply ships have no escort and uh, where were the nearest units of the PCG or Philippine Navy? Yung pagpadala po ng resupply boats at ang pagdating po nila doon without um, any escorts is just a testament and proof that we can peacefully supply and resupply our Filipino citizens there. Opo. Is this uh, being seen daw po as an act of aggr aggression against our military security forces? Nagsalita na po uh, si Pangulong Duterte tungkol sa issue na yan. Um, and the DFA has already released a statement with regard to that issue and concern. Um, and uh, our uh, resupply boats have already reached Ayungin Shoals. Opo. Yung, second, yung third question niya, yan ang nga po sinagot niyo ng Secretary Nograles. Opo. Tanong po ni Pia Gutierrez, reaction daw po sa statement ng Pamalakaya saying that President Duterte's statement denouncing the recent water cannons incident in the West Philippine Sea is too little too late and that's it is under the Duterte's administration that China has uh, intensified its militarization and aggression in the West Philippine Sea. They added that Duterte's uh, pivot against China is uh, subtle electioneering and to, prefer, uh, to preserve his political career as majority of the Filipinos want to assert our rights in the West Philippine Sea. Hindi po totoo lahat ng mga paratang na yun. Um, TFA acted swiftly. The President spoke about the issue. Ang resupply boats po natin ay nakarating sa Ayungin Shoal. Okay, thank you uh, Secretary Nograles and DG uh, Domingo. Salamat po sa MPC. Maraming maraming salamat Yusek Rocky at DG Domingo. Mga kababayan, sa kabila ng maraming hamon at tagumpay, nananatili ang pangangailangan para sa pinagkaisang adhikain, para sa paghilom at pagbangon ng bayan. Hanggang ngayon, nananatili ang ating panawagan, kailangan nating magtulungan. Maraming salamat po. Ingat po lagi. God bless.